Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing my August 2020 BookTuber shoutouts. So as always, there are a list of tw uh, 10 channels here. I'm going to link through to all of them in the description box below. So feel free to go through, check them out, and to, to subscribe to any of them that take your fancy. So, let's jump right in. So number one. So here we have Kaz from Cats and Camera, uh, one of my favourite BookTube channels really. She reads a lot of gay stuff, um, and a lot of indie stuff. So the two of those combined is pretty much all you really need to know to go and watch her. I mean, she talks about books that nobody else talks about. She's a big Darren Shan fan, so I recently sent her, um, I saw on eBay a signed Darren Shan book going, so I just put in like a token bid at the uh, starting price, and I won it, so I sent that to her, and um, yeah, she seems to have enjoyed that, so that's good. Uh, she reads a lot of graphic novels as well. I think um, we don't necessarily have a lot of overlap in the specific kinds of books that we read, but one of the reasons why I watch BookTube is just to learn more about the market, you know, and to understand more about what's out there. So I really don't need another review of uh, the new Hunger Games book, because I know that there's a new Hunger Games book. I will eventually read it myself, you know? Whereas Kaz will come out and it'll be like, here's this great indie book about these two gay guys who, like, don't save the world because they don't want to. So they just sort of spend some time together waiting for the world to end around them. Or, I don't know, just weird stuff, which is great. Up number two, we have Native Lady Book Warrior. She's a recently new channel I've subscribed to, and um, I want to give a bit of love back to her, really, because she's always so enthusiastic, both in my comments, but also in the comments of other videos that I see as well. She just seems, like, so full of life, and, um, yeah, for someone like me, that can be quite refreshing. She also has a couple of kids that have been in her videos as well, so they did a little, like, spoofy, sketchy video. I, I can't remember now. Was it, like, when Mummy has to go back to the library or something like that? Um, definitely, um, definitely one of my, my ones to watch for sure. The content I've seen so far has been great. And number three, we have The Archive. So this is also, who used to be Graham Quigley. He still is Graham Quigley, he just doesn't use his name for his channel, I suppose. I give Graham a lot of shout outs because, uh, again, he's one of these channels that I just watch all the time. Uh, if Native Lady Bo Book Warrior is like full of life and uh, like, you know, overflowing with um, like energy and whatnot, Graham's almost the opposite. He's quite laid back and chilled. Um, he's quite sarcastic sometimes. Not as sarcastic as maybe Charlie Heathcote, to be fair. But he has a little bit of sarcasm in him sometimes. Um, like uh, He's the kind of person who will say something and you'll only know he's joking because of the little twinkle in his eye. And um, I'm fine with that, you know. He's recently been reading some Terry Pratchett. I think he not, not too long ago read The uh, Unseen Academicals, which is when football comes to the Discworld. And uh, overall, yeah, I just love his channel do enjoy his accent as well and one part, one day I would like to go for a beer with him. Okay up next we have Rajathon and uh, Raj's channel is super new to me. I don't even know if his name is Raj but I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, male booktuber so if that's what you're looking for I guess. I mean at this point we've all got over the gender thing it doesn't really matter right. It's, it's weird that anyway whatever it doesn't matter whether he's male. It, what matters is that he wants to read some more Isaac Asimov so I'm hoping that he does and I'm watching his channel in case he does um, because not enough people talk about Asimov on BookTube, and so it was cool when we, we got chatting in, uh, in the comments of my Asimov review. And hopefully, as I say, hopefully he'll have some soon. And in the meantime, you know, he's got all the, all the normal bookish stuff that you would like to, uh, like to expect from someone. Then we have Mindy's book journey. So I've been watching Mindy for a good long while now. Uh, Mindy reads a fair amount of horror. She does a bit of indie as well. Uh, she's, I suppose, a bit like Kaz from Cats and Camera in that she just picks up all of these books that I would never have heard of anywhere else. Um, so she, I watched one of her recent wrap-ups not too long ago, and not only had I not read any of the books that she'd mentioned, I hadn't even heard of any of the books she'd mentioned, I'd only heard of one of the authors, and about six of them went onto my wish list. so that is why, why I watch Mindy's book journey. Up next we have Fly on the Wall Press, so this is a small publishing house ran by Isabel Kenyon. She's been kind enough to send me a few books throughout the years, and every one of them has been like super fascinating. So, um, for example, we have um, Alcoholic Betty by Elizabeth Horam, which is sort of contemporary poetry. It's all poetry that she publishes, um, which is like contemporary poetry about alcoholism, basically, and this, this woman kind of late in her life coming to terms with her sexuality, going through a divorce and this kind of stuff. So that was really fascinating. Uh, they did a book called Planet in Peril as well, which is like writing about global warming, basically. Persona non grata, that was all about people who feel like they're on the edge of society, whether they're immigrants or LGBTQ or whatever. And um, the money from that went to crisis, I believe. So yeah, they, they got a lot of really cool books out, a lot of really cool initiatives. And uh, their YouTube channel has things like readings and stuff like that. So it's a good little taster if you want to, you know, get to know more about some of their books. Not a true booktuber, but hey-ho. 
Then we have Brad Proctor. So Brad is another horror fan and another super laid back fan, uh, person as well. So the two of them, like if you put Brad Proctor and Graham Quigley in, in a room, I think it would be the most relaxing thing ever. In fact, I would like to watch the two of them speak to each other because it would just be so chill. It'd be the kind of thing I'd put on like on, on my phone in bed. Like, well, I'll read my book in bed and I'll have them two just chatting to each other. Fairly low volume, just enough so I can hear what they're talking about. And I'd doze off and it'd be wonderful. But yeah, Brad reads a load of really cool stuff as well. Uh, as I say, he's a big horror fan. So really, that's what I, I, what I go to him for. Let me have Richardson Reads. So this is another channel I've been into for quite a long time now. He uh, actually reads some stuff about like naval history and stuff like that. I would say uh, if you like Steve Donahue stuff, you'll like Richardson Reads. Uh, he also lives uh, near the Brattle Bookshop, so he's been there a good few times, although I don't know if it's currently open due to one thing and another in the world, but uh, it probably is, I would imagine, by now. But yeah, um, really great channel, really nice approachable guy as well, um, always had a kind word, and uh, I know he doesn't do them anymore, but back in the day I used to really love his bookshelf tours, and so I recommend going back through his archives and checking those out if, you, if it takes you fancy. Then we have Linda Jo Martin, the book lady. So, um, I mean, she reads quite a lot of Christian fiction and non-fiction, which isn't really my jam, but I'm always like, again, I, I like to know what's out there and I don't see anybody else talking about it. So that's one of the things that kind of fascinates me. She's just also just a really nice person. She was looking at maybe moving into an, and living in a van a little while back, although that did fall through, unfortunately. But I was watching that quite keenly because I've been thinking about doing something similar. And um, yeah, I mean, she reads a bunch of other stuff as well. So my classic example I give was we had a lovely little chat about um, Woody Guthrie's book, Bound for Glory. And I don't know anybody else who's read that. So um, yeah, Melinda Jo Martin, the book lady, check her out. And finally, we have Page Nomad, who was originally Cam from Wolfshot Publishing. He also has a second channel now where he talks about other stuff, including I've seen a few good rants about games and like, he had a good video on like the odds of winning the lottery and stuff, which was quite cool. But yeah, Cam's always been, uh, you know, pretty, pretty supportive to me. He actually sent me one of his t-shirts when he was doing his fashion line. And um, I still wear that t-shirt all the time. It's my favorite t-shirt. I actually wear it when I'm working at the art center when I can, because it's like the one that I look the most presentable in. But um, all of his videos are super well thought out. I enjoyed his videos on Kathleen Hale, probably about nine months ago now as well. Kathleen Hale, the crazy stalker. He does a good mixture of kind of talking about some of the books that he's read and the things that he's got up to, but also just talking about the wider bookish and writing community in general. So for that, I don't think there's another channel quite like it. So there we have it. Those are my, te my 10 August 2020 booktuber shout outs. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments which channels you've been enjoying lately so I can check those out. Hit that subscribe button both on my channel if you enjoy my content. And again, all of these booktubers are linked to below, so I do recommend checking them out if you can. And uh, I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.